This NHL season may be the most chaotic season that we've seen in a very, very long time. With an absurdly close wildcard race, players chasing history, and franchises relocating, there is an unbelievable season finale starting to take shape in the NHL. The chaos just hasn't stopped, so let's cover everything that happened this week. Sunday, Red Wing Panic. In the wildcard chaos that is the East right now, one of the more relevant games included the Detroit Red Wings and the Buffalo Sabres. After the resurrection of Sidney Crosby and the Penguins, Detroit fans are starting to panic just a little bit and they need every single point. Lucas Raymond steps up big time and gets a goal and an assist to help the Red Wings win 3-1. Alex Lyon has been a dog the last few years for trying to get teams into the playoffs, and he came up huge in this game, stopping 37 shots and finishing with a 974 save percentage. With that win, the Red Wings hop back into the last wildcard spot in the East, and they better pray that they can hold on. Meanwhile, the anomalies that are the Washington Capitals look to keep up as they face the empty net guardians and hopefully lock up an easy two points. But look at this. The game has completely stopped because Jonas Corposalo can't see a damn thing when a ray of sunshine peeks through the arena to get in his vision. One of the weirder things I've ever seen, but it fits for the Capitals who are a weird anomaly this entire season. To keep up this gag, they lose 3-2 to the Sens and drop their 6th straight. They should miss the playoffs, but knowing them, they're probably going to find a way to squeak right in there with a shootout loss or something. Now, as the playoffs come up, the Rangers are in a position to become the President Trophy winners. Considering that there is the President Trophy's curse, fans may not want that, but the Rangers are just too damn good right now. Panarin had a monster game, putting up four points against the Habs, and he's one of those guys who in any other year would be considered for the Hart Trophy, but because the competition is so stacked, he likely won't be considered. The Rangers win and tie a franchise record for their 53rd win on the season. In the West, Ryan O'Reilly's shootout winner against the Devils gets them two points up on Vegas for the last wildcard spot, while the big dogs in Dallas and Colorado went at it in the late game. For the most part, Dallas looked like the better team in this game and their depth continues to outshine everyone. Wyatt Johnson gets three points in this one and despite a late surge for Colorado, the Stars just shut things down when it mattered and took this game 7-4. As Colorado has faltered a bit down the stretch going 2-1-4 in their last seven, Dallas, to me, looked like the scariest team to come out of the West. There's no good matchup for anyone in the first round, but matching up against Dallas may be the worst draw. Monday, the Penguin Run. Right in the back of Sid the middle-aged man, the Penguins look to make it five in a row against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, tons of storylines here. You got Sid reviving the Penguins like The Undertaker, Matthews chasing 70, and Cal Dubas facing his old team. It's all fantastic as the Penguins got an early one to set the tone, but after rookie Matthew Nyes tied the game for the Leafs, we were all tied at one after 40 minutes of play. Then of course, you had to know Austin Matthews was going to get at least one as he wires home his 65th of the season and ties Alex Ovechkin for the most goals in a season during the salary cap era. Sure enough, the Penguins tie it late in the third to get a massive extra point, but the Leafs would score the dagger in OT with Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin not seeing any ice time in 3-on-3. Three -three. Penguins fans were all over Coach Mike Sullivan for that decision, but Apparently, Crosby had a skate issue and couldn't be on the ice for the start of OT. That makes more sense than just straight up sitting the GOAT for overtime, but can you imagine if the Penguins end up missing by just a point and it's because Crosby's skate kept him off the ice to get that extra point in OT? That would be next level scriptwriter stuff going on, but we gotta see how it all ends. Now, the other game on Monday was between the Canucks and the Vegas injured reserves. And Vegas jumped out to an early two goal lead, but we got ourselves another miniature choke as Vancouver ties it back up. And Connor Garland's two goals would be the difference as the Canucks take this one 4-3 in regulation. The Canucks remain on top of the Pacific Division, being five points up on the Oilers, while the Golden Knights hold on to the second wild card spot in the West. Tuesday, MVP Mayhem. Tuesday was absolute chaos for the league, and it started with the Red Wings and the Capitals going head-to-head -head for a huge matchup. For most of this game, the Red Wings dominated the play, but Ovi and the Caps are a team of destiny. The big rush machine came in barreling on the left wing like we're back in 2007, and he fires a wrister to beat Alex Lyon clean for his 30th goal of the season. That is an NHL record as he surpasses Mike Gardner's 17 straight seasons of scoring 30 goals or more. 
That would be the game winner as Charlie Lindgren would absolutely steal this one for the Caps in regulation and they leapfrog both the Red Wings and the Penguins for the final wildcard spot in the East. Once more, when it makes no sense for them to win, the anomalies strike again. Then to keep the chaos rolling, we had the Battle of New York and the Islanders came out of the gates hot with a three goal lead. The Rangers would end up clawing back, but the bad blood started to take over. Rangers forward Mika Zibanejad eats a shoulder to the draw from Adam Pellick. That spices things up, and as the Rangers push to tie the game up late, Vinny Trocek gets shoved from behind along the boards with no call. Trocek was furious with the refs after the Islanders held on to win the game, and post-game, Laviolette called out the Pellick hit, saying that it was vicious. Islanders win their fifth in a row and now sit third in the Metro, and there could be fireworks between them and the Rangers when they play again on Saturday. Now, a team that seems completely doomed is the Philadelphia Flyers. They got absolutely pumped 9-3 by the Montreal Canadiens on Tuesday, and that saw Yuri Slavkovsky record his first career hat trick. The kid has been lights out since February for the Habs and is growing comfortable to the bright lights of the NHL, while the Flyers have seemingly done the opposite. They lose their eighth in a row, and a jersey was tossed on the ice in disgust. You'd expect Torres to come out guns blazing for the post-game interview, but if you listen to him talk, his message was to just try and get back to doing the little things right. This team has received a league-worst 849 save percentage down the stretch, and it's cost the team a playoff spot. Torts had them playing above their head all year long with them being a young, rebuilding squad, but no team or coach is ever going to make the playoffs with that quality of goaltending. While all this was going on, the skill of the league was on full display. You got this disgusting in-between-the-legs goal by Gabe Velarde as the Jets win 4-3 and clinch a playoff spot. Meanwhile, Andrei Svechnikov is pulling off another Michigan so cleanly that no one has any clue if it went in or not. The talent of the league is off the charts, and it doesn't even include the work from the potential MVP candidates. Austin Matthews strengthens his case for the MVP as he scores yet again against the Devils, and his 66th of the season sets the salary cap era record for most goals in a season. While he chases 70, Nikita Kucherov is still leading the NHL in scoring as his part-time job. Stamkos gets a hat trick and Kucherov records another casual three assists with his eyes closed. The dude is so effortlessly gross, it just makes me sick. But just when you think Kucherov is going to pull away, the Nate Dog has himself a monster game. He scores a hat trick against the Minnesota Wild and on all three goals, I swear to God, it looks like the video is sped up. He blows by every single player on the ice, and he skates like he's mad at the world. The Avs win 5-2, and this continues to be the best NHL MVP race that I've seen in years. Wednesday, Salt Lake City. We got a bombshell on Wednesday when it was announced that there's a very real possibility that the Arizona Coyotes could relocate as soon as next year to Utah. I've been joking for the entire year pretty much that they've been the Salt Lake City Yotes, but now it's a very real possibility. Despite all the noise, the Yotes had a game to play against the Canucks, and the birthday boy, Dylan Genther, went off for four points. Logan Cooley gets the OT winner, and the future Salt Lake City Coyotes pick up the two points. It's a tough year for Arizona, and this may be one of the very last Coyote wins that we ever get to see, so enjoy it while it's here. The Blues had the Bedards in a must-win game to chase down Vegas, and right away, they were in Bedard's kitchen. He was held pointless in this one, while Jordan Cairo gets two goals for an easy 5-2 St. Louis win. The Blues now sit three points back from Vegas for the final wild card spot, with three games remaining on their schedule. There's still a slight chance for the ultimate Vegas downfall, however, they would get to play an Oilers team who's missing Connor McDavid. He's out day to day with an injury, but it doesn't matter as the Oilers clap the injured reserves 5-1 to one to make things quite interesting for that last spot in the West. Thursday, the Wizard of Cross. The finish to this season is going to be wild, and with the Red Wings and Penguins right in the thick of the playoff race, this was a must win for both teams. The Penguins got on the board first as Crosby assists on Drew O'Connor's goal to kick things off. Then these two teams just traded blows. Penguins scored two, Detroit responded, the Penguins get another, and in desperation for their playoff hopes, Detroit gets two in the third with Lucas Raymond getting his hat trick goal. This game would need OT where Eric Carlson would take a pass from Sid himself and just hammer this one home. The crowd is on fire, Penguins win, 
Crosby moves 10th all-time in scoring. He gets his 1,000th career assist, and the Wizard of Cross continues to drag this team into the playoffs. The Penguins are now 7-0-3 in their last 10, and they are on the verge of doing something very special. However, they are still being chased down by Ovi and the Caps. After all these years, it's still coming down to these two legends and their teams going up against each other one more time. The Anomalies needed this one bad, but you know the Sabres. When the lights are so dim that you can't see a damn thing, that's when they shine the most. They thrive in the games that don't matter for them, and they get the best of the caps with Alex Tuck getting the game winner. When the final horn blew, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned line brawl. Tage Thompson and Max Pacioretty are chucking bombs, always just standing there watching like, let's see how this plays out. Meanwhile, Wilson and Greenway are getting in the mix and say whatever you want about fighting, but every single Sabres fan is on their feet for a meaningless game in April. This is the entertainment business and nothing gets people on their feet like a fight. Philly fans know a thing or two about fighting, but after losing eight straight, hope has dwindled to an all-time low. However, it does seem like Torts' message of getting back to doing the little things right seemed to work, as they beat the Rangers of all teams in this one, and now they sit one point back of a playoff spot, but with them having more games played than the other teams, things are still looking bleak. It doesn't look good for the Flyers, especially when the New York Islanders can't stop winning games. Cal Palmieri goes top bunk on the OT winner against the Habs. What a sick puppy. That is the sixth straight win for the Islanders, and they are starting to look real comfortable in that third spot in the Metro. Good news and bad news for Leaf fans. The good news is that Matthews is now two goals away from 70. The bad news is you just lost to the New Jersey Devils while the Panthers shut out the Blue Jackets. That right there warrants the cup parade being on a momentary pause. It's not cancelled, it's paused. There's a difference, so please don't at me. To no one's surprise, Nikita Kucherov gets another two assists. Absolute sicko is on fire. He's at 98 on the season, one back from McDavid, and it's entirely possible that these two join Gretzky, Lemieux, and Orr as the only players to get 100 assists in a season, and they might do it in the same year. In the West, things are much more settled as the Kings become the seventh team to clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Flames, but the matchups are starting to shape up. The most intriguing will likely be the Jets and the Avs. The top three teams in the Central are gross, and even though the Jets are on our potential fraud list, they handled the Stars really well with a 3-0 shutout victory on Thursday. It's unlikely Colorado or Winnipeg will catch Dallas for the top spot, but with home ice advantage up for grabs, these last few games will be crucial for both teams. There were some other games on, but with everyone else being out of the picture, the only thing these teams are now playing for are Cabo trips and tea times. Don't worry, boys. You're almost there. Friday. They can't keep getting away with this. Friday was a big news day in the NHL, and it was basically confirmed that the Arizona Coyotes are in fact moving to Salt Lake City, and the players have been informed prior to Friday's game against the Oilers. And there have been reports that some of the players are not happy with how this all went down. Considering that some of these guys signed there thinking they will be living in Arizona for the foreseeable future, only to end up in Utah is probably a shock. But regardless, it looks like the Salt Lake City Sea Lions are actually going to get its run. Despite all the noise, the Yotes beat a McDavidless Oilers team in OT, and post game, no Coyote player was made available to the media. It's a bit surreal that next week will be the last Coyote game, even though the writing has been on the wall for quite some time. Then we witness one of the most miraculous recoveries in modern medicine as Mark Stone returns to practice in a non contact jersey. He has risen just in time for game one of the NHL playoffs, and the goddamn Vegas injured reserves strike again. The only team that can bring balance to the NHL is now the St. Louis Blues. They are the last team left that can chase Vegas out of that final playoff spot, but they lay an absolute egg against the Hurricanes while the injured reserves manhandle the Wild. Vegas clinches a playoff spot, and the villains of the NHL are in full swing. Saturday, wild card drama. It is coming down to the wire in the east, and all five teams in the mix were in action on Saturday night. To kick us off, the Islanders got the Rangers in the matinee game, and Artemi Panera bread scores a late one to force extra time. Rangers win it in a shootout, but the Isles get a big extra point. The Washington Anomalies had the lightning, and a scary moment happened when Mikey Isimont took Nick Jensen into the board's heart. Instantly, the Caps challenged Isimont, but 
Jensen had to be stretchered off. Hopefully everything's okay with Jensen, but the Caps would rally behind that and Sonny Milano comes up with a huge two goals to set the tone for the game. John Carlson pops the game winner on the power play and the Caps also get a big two points. Meanwhile, Philly is just hanging in there by a thread after they went on an eight game massive losing streak, yet there's still a small chance that they can pull this off. Travis Konechny, who's been there heart and soul, scores a monumental shorthanded goal in the second, and that would be the only goal of the game as Philly takes it one nothing against the Devils. Then the Red Wings had their hands full as they had to take on a Leafs team with Matthews chasing 70. Detroit came out to play as they jumped out to a 4-1 lead in the first, but with James Reimer being in net for Detroit, 4-1 leads are almost certainly his kryptonite. Leafs storm back to tie the game. Matthews gets number 69. Nice. But it's the captain, Dylan Larkin, who gets the clutch OT winner to avoid the choke, and Detroit joins the others in getting a massive two points. Afterwards, Leafs coach Sheldon Keefe said that Matthews' chase for 70 was a major distraction in that game, admitting that he himself wanted to see it happen. I get what he's saying, but very poor choice of words, and because of that, we are keeping the Leaf Cup parade on a temporary hold. Finally, in the East, we had the Pittsburgh Penguins. The team on a miracle run led by Sidney Crosby was bound to let him down one last time. They had to go up against Boston and they came out hot, jumping out to a 4-1 lead. And despite a late push for the Penguins, they lose 6-4 in regulation to Boston to put a serious dent in their playoff hopes. It'd be so fitting for this Pittsburgh Penguins season if after all this, they end up choking at the very, very end. When it was all said and done on Saturday, it's the Islanders and Capitals hanging on to the last playoff spots. Heading into the final week of the season, everyone but the Flyers have two games left on their schedule. Meanwhile, in the West, everyone has confirmed their spot. However, Dallas did beat Seattle, and that has confirmed a playoff match between the Avs and the Jets. We'd get a little sneak peek on Saturday, and the Jets laid the smackdown on Colorado with a dominant 7-0 win. The Jets were on the potential fraud list, but maybe the true frauds are the Avalanche. Either way, we're going to find out very soon with the playoffs starting next Saturday. So, heading into the final week of the regular season, who do you got making the playoffs in the East? Who's your MVP on the season? Let us know in the comments down below. And with the playoffs coming right up, you won't want to miss all the content we're pumping out. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and catch up on our videos from this week.